right, welcome aboard. Step on in. Come on in and have a seat. Get comfortable. All right, so today we are going to talk about motion sickness. What better way to talk about motion sickness than in the air? Oh, we're going to step up, fly around a little bit, and let's talk about motion sickness. Now, motion sickness is a real deal. Um, it's got, there's so many people jumping into VR now that uh, they've even done some research on it and found that about 40 to 70 percent of the people that uh, participate in VR gaming have some form of motion or have experienced some form of motion sickness. 40 to 70 percent. I mean, that's almost, uh, that's a shit ton of people. So motion sickness is very real. It's even so, uh, it's even got to a point now where They've categorized it. They've come up with a whole new category. Virtual motion sickness. Not just motion sickness, but virtual motion sickness. So it is a real deal. Now, what is motion sickness? Well, it's a very yucky feeling. Um, symptoms would be uh, dizziness, headaches, sweating, the feeling of being overheated, maybe clammy skin, nausea, vomiting, uh, fatigue. It's pretty serious when it gets to a, uh, when you feel, when you experience a full-blown motion sickness, it's pretty damn ugly. Now, what causes motion sickness is the conflicting information that your brain is receiving. So, your eyes and ears are telling your brain one thing, in this case, you know, they're experiencing the motion that uh, we're, we're experiencing now, but my body's sitting still. So, the brain is getting conflicting information, because if I'm banking like this, my body's not feeling that bank. My eyes and ears are seeing it and hearing it, but my body's not experiencing that. So, that is conflicting information going to my brain that's pissing my brain off. And my brain is saying, oh, hell no. And that's what brings on the symptoms. So I can tell you firsthand, I am a retired Air Force photographer. I had many, many hours doing videos and shooting photography out of Blackhawks, out of Chinooks and uh, C-130s. So I can tell you that uh, motion sickness is a real deal. Um, and of course, I was in the Air Force for 27 years, so I flew. I don't know how many thousands of hours I probably have raked up just in all the deployments and conditions that we were on. So I got a lot of experience in motion sickness. So what I did, the minute I felt it coming on, I acted pretty quick. Uh, I realized that it was coming on. I didn't let it over, uh, uh, I didn't let my anxiety get me. I didn't let, let it take over. So I kept calm. And the next thing I realized is I got to get some air. Man. So I breathe. Big breaths. I took in some big breaths. Take a couple, two or three big breaths in through your mouth, out through your nose, however you want to do it. What works for me is big breaths in. Big breaths in. That helped me calm down right away. The next thing I would do is I would find the horizon. If, if possible, find the horizon and just kind of keep focusing on it. The body needs something that's stable. So what I would do is, if I'm turning, as you can see here in the video, as my aircraft is banking, I'm tilting my head. I'm tilting my head so that the horizon line is staying somewhat level. Because the idea is, my brain needs to see something that's level. That's the easiest way for me to do it. That was the biggest step for me. Once I hit stage three, or that step there, I was pretty good. Now, again, it's not, uh, it's not a, I believe, I'm a firm believer of mind over matter. Not saying that uh, it's motion sickness is all mental, because it is in no means, uh, in no way, um, all mental. But what I would do is I would distract myself. I wouldn't let it, I 
wouldn't let it fester. I, I'm a firm believer of uh, law of attraction. So if I'm thinking, oh man, I'm going to get motion sickness, I'm going to get motion sickness, then I'm probably going to get motion sickness. So I try to distract myself right away as fast as I can. Now, if that didn't help, I would try to align my body in the direction that I was flying. VR, obviously, you're going to be facing the same direction. But in the real world, if I was shooting out of a Black Hawk and I was shooting out the door, I was pretty much shooting this direction, this area here. So even though I was strapped in, I would try to torque my body so that I could sit. And I would sit right at the edge of the seat. And you know, there's an open door. So I would turn my body as much as I could to face the direction that I was shooting in. Again, I'm telling my brain that my body and my eyes and ears are experiencing all the same thing. Very important. The other thing I would do is, uh, in VR, if I'm doing a flight sim, I try to lean into what I was into the direction that I'm going. So, if I'm flying like this and I'm going to bank to the left, I try to lean into it. If I'm going to the right, I'm going to lean into the right. I'm forcing my body to feel that same that my eyes and my ears are seeing. That was a big help. Now, if you're, when I was in Black Hawks, I couldn't tell what the pilots were going to do, but I would, if they started banking to the left, man, I was leaning. If they banked to the right, I was leaning. And that really helped me out quite a bit. Now, there are some other ways to, to get around it. You could uh, just start to, you know, do um, your VR sessions, time them, you know, maybe do 10 minutes, then, uh, take off your headset, go outside for a while, get some fresh air, come back in, maybe do 15 minutes, just to kind of get your body acclimated to the idea of VR. So those are important things to consider. Um, and of course, there's Dremamine, uh, and there's motion sickness patches. Uh, those may work for you as well. There was times when I would take Dremamine, but boy, I tell you, I felt when the mission was over, man, I, it hit me really hard. When I came down off the adrenaline, woo, serious crash. So if you're going to drive or do anything like that after Dremamine, we'd be very careful because it really kicked my rear end. So I quit using Dremamine and I just I just uh, grinned and bared it as they say. So another thing you can do is uh, your gaming area. Keep it cool. One of the problems or one of the symptoms that you get in, with motion sickness is the uh, overheat of overheating and sweating. So if you keep your body, your room temperature pretty cold, that'll definitely help. Uh, the other thing is keeping a fan. I highly suggest using a fan. In my case, I've got a fan that's probably out of video shot, but it's right, right in front of me, uh, blowing air on me. Now that fan provides me with some cooling, of course, I, you know, keeping me cool. The sensation of the, the, the air hitting my my face makes me feel like I'm moving forward, which also tells my body, you know, to put those two together, my body and my eyes and ears are seeing all the same thing. And again, uh, when I, uh, because I was talking about, uh, or because I leaned into it, what I decided to do was to get a harness. I got a five-point harness that I've attached to my rig. Now, the lap belt and the strap between my legs, that's bolted to the actual frame, but my shoulder strap is actually attached to a bungee cord, and the bungee cords are then attached to the frame. And what that does is that gives me the ability to do this, to move around, to twist and things. And it does two things. It gives me the freedom to move, but it also gives me that sensation of being pulled back into the aircraft. Now, just having the harness on, on its own, is going to make me feel like I'm in the aircraft. So. Again, my body's feeling what my eyes are seeing. And then when I reach, when I lean forward like that, it wants to pull me back, which again is telling my body and my, my telling my brain that my body is experiencing what my eyes are seeing. Now on my rig, I've got a custom rig. And what I've done is I've added butt kickers or a base shaker. Some people know them as base shakers. Uh, butt kicker is actually a brand of base shaker. And basically what it is, it's a magnet that vibrates to the sounds that are going on in your game. In my case, it's a helicopter, so I can feel the, the rumble of the, the blades through my feet, through my chair. And even when I make it, 
when it does, when it gets loud like that, I can feel that, all that intensifies. So again, we're telling our body that, hey, you're experiencing the same thing that my ears are hearing and my eyes are seeing. Uh, some people feel like, uh, you know, ginger root, maybe ginger ale, ginger root products, uh, Dremamine patches, uh, even the uh, trim of the motion, motion sickness uh, wristbands might help you as well. So again, believe that motion sickness is real. It happens to everyone. It's just a matter of what you do when uh, you feel it knocking on the door. How do you address it? Uh, and what works for you? Maybe taking a break, you know, doing a little bit at a time, get your body adjusted, activated to the VR world. Uh, maybe that's what you need to do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. I think I might be sticking this man. I'm liking that. And touch down. We are on the ground. Alright guys, have a good day. If you have comments, leave a like, share, subscribe. See ya.